Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show. Today, Jake Clark, John Schneider, and Eric Faldi are gonna talk about filament during, or changing your filament during a print. So whether it's color, or whether it's material type, or for like this bottle opener, you're dropping something in, um, that's mainly the reasons why you're gonna change filament. Or yeah. if you run out. So, cause you you did this with your skateboard. And yep. yeah, if you run out too. So you did this with your skateboard on a rep too? Yes. So, and then you just, I think you just waited for the print to... Yeah, so I knew what percentage, I think it was just 97%, it, ar arbitrary number, but you know, you just know what number it is. Or you can look uh, in the slicer when you're looking at what the layers it's at, and you just have to kind of guess, you know, like, oh, it's going to be after 90%, and then you kind of just keep an eye on it. Um, if you do have something like a, a web viewer, you know, something where you can watch it on a webcam, be really nice, because otherwise sometimes I come here at four in the morning for stupid reasons, and right. that's probably one of them. And, and for some, you can you can actually be seeing what line of G-code it's yeah. on. Like, you can be seeing the like the visualizer for the G-code. Yeah, so in, in MakerBot, it's not quite as uh, sophisticated, but it, it's worked well enough for me. And if I don't get it in there, then it just turns out like this. And I don't yeah, so, I mean, in this case, I mean, you can see very clearly, this one is where he didn't do the color change. This one did the color change Actually, at about 97%. The orientation was different on these, but it's still the uh, the, uh, it, the, principle the visual the effect is, yeah, there you get yeah. it. <laughs> and we've seen some people do very similar things with maps where you'll have, uh, let's say you, you're doing a state and you're doing rivers or lakes underneath it. So you'll have the state being one color and the rivers are gonna be at a lower elevation. So you'll start printing in blue that gets through your lakes and rivers and then you print the top part in green. And you just, I mean, really in a lot of cases you just pause the printer and change your filament out and resume your print. There are some slicers that will actually pause at a specific layer height or pause at a specific percent. I know Kira has an ability to do that. MakerBot Desktop does not. Uh, and there's not and there's just yet. a few there's just a few well, other you slicers. You can Z pause there. it in the printer itself, but it's not like you have to figure out what the what the difference? I, and because I, I, I haven't think, touched that for like two, three. I long, think you so can actually go in and insert a line of code that says. Pause. I think actually on the printer itself, and once you start printing, you can say pause at oh, okay. Z layer or whatever. Okay. But well, I don't a, know if it actually matches up to the print print viewer. Oh. Now that I think about it, and that's why I haven't messed with it for like two years. Sure. So, I so, think it's there. So color changes are one thing that you can uh, you can do this for. Um, another one is if you're trying to insert an object into a print. So a bottle opener is a really good example of this. In this case, it's a printed part that has, what is this, a penny? It's a penny. Yeah, so it has a penny on the inside. So for the bottle opener, the, you just need that penny to have the extra extra strength because otherwise it just wouldn't hold up to opening multiple bottles. It would, it would end up breaking or cutting through the plastic after just a few tries. Yeah, I actually, I have a friend, uh, he's from India and he took this uh, to India during summer break and a lot of people are where'd you get that American penny? They, <laughs> they all know what American money looks like I guess but then uh, he ended up breaking it. I did give him another okay. one. So uh, Thank you for spreading the word <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and there's there's some people that will actually drop electronics into uh, into their print so there's um, there's a printer out there called the Voxelate printer so this one will actually print both the solid plastic and then a type of silver uh, silver traces to, to actually put the circuits into the 3D print. And then their slicer is really, really interesting. You can tell it, all right, I'm going to be putting this electronic component like a motor or a, a small circuit board, tell it to stop at a certain point so that it will stop exactly when you need it to. So then the very next layer it puts over, it will actually completely embed that part in the print, which you would need the software to do that if you're trying yeah. to do multiple so that, components. So that's not a manual thing at all. It's no, just no. All, it, that's, that's with Autodesk, correct? I yeah, Autodesk, Autodesk has invested quite Everything a bit of money them. into that uh, through their, uh, I forget, I think it's the Spark initiative. That sounds correct, yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think of what it was. That sounds good, anyway. <laughs> so inserting objects into a print. Um, another really common reason you'd want to stop and change filament is if your spool of filament is about to run out. So. We like running our filament spools all the way down to the very end if we can. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just otherwise we have to throw the rest of that spool into the scrap pile and it'll get recycled eventually, but it's always great it if you can get. It accumulates. Yeah, overcoming. it starts. When you print as much as we do, I mean, we have, <laughs> oh man, we probably I have, have Gaylords. We probably oh. have half a ton of just. 3D printer scrap, whether it's prints that have gone poorly, rafts little, or little rafts, scrap support leftovers. material, yep. and of course the remnants of spools because it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to keep just that very last layer of, of a spool because there's not a lot of projects that use that small I mean, something like this or like a little trinket you can get away with. But, but it's, it's yeah. far and few between. Yep. Um, so then we end up having to keep that spool that takes up space and having to just store it. So it's always great to use the very last bits of the filament. 
So. Yeah, what is the, uh, we have, somebody sent it to us, the thing that uh, detects filament when it's running out on the uh, Rep 2 because it didn't have the... Well, it's actually really for any printer. Detection. Yeah, well, I can't remember the name. For example, we use it um, for the Rep 2 because it yeah. didn't have the built-in uh, filament um, Yeah, and all it does is, is, whatever. is the neat little thing, all it does is when there's two different, there's two sets of bearings, so there's two sets of bearings and the filament runs between them, and then when, they, when the filament's between them and you flip the switch on, um, no noise happens, but once the two bearings touch each other, but really it's actually in the casing. It's a little switch. A, yeah. And then, uh, but when the bearings touch each other and there's nothing in it, then it sounds a little buzzer and it's really annoying. It's terrifying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I always think it's like a, you know, like a printer hitting a, an end stop. Just I it's, mean, it's a very high pitched. It gets thing. your attention, but yeah. it gives you enough time to go and run to the printer, pause it, mm -hmm. change filament out, resume the print. I think and there's a couple other different there, filament detectors there are, on yes, Thingiverse yeah. and as well as a couple other um, for sale on in different websites. We'll put the link for that and I think we talked about doing a review of that at some point and we just never got around to it. Honestly, five stars. It works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want a review, there you it's go. It, it does It does exactly what it claims to do. Yeah. Um, it's. I don't think it's ever not worked for us. Yeah, and then you it, can only it, put it on a horizontal surface though. You cannot vertically mount it unless you have the filament going in. Um, is that just how the, the switch inside works? Yeah. Okay. So um, you can, like we have it where we have a rep two and a rep two, then it's, you know, the top one's sitting on a shelf and then we have our filament holder on top. So then we run the filament back behind and that's where we can have that device horizontally over the edge so we can put, go through it. Um, where if you were to put it on the back of a unit, you'd have to have it come up and through. So yeah, so I mean, you'd, you'd, have, have, to, you'd, have, to print out. you'd have to figure out how to mount it. But yep. yeah, I mean, when it, it works. works. It works, and the, we have. Unless you're not here. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. but but I mean, then you're going to run into a problem no matter what. Unless you have an extruder that automatically <clears throat> detects the filament runs out and will pause the print. So, Very nice thing with the smart extruders. So extrudes. the uh, yeah. So the MakerPot smart extruders will do that. You can print all the way to the very end of a spool, and I mean, and it'll use up to like the remaining inch of filament. Yeah. And so it'll detect when the filament is out. Then it will retract that filament. Pause the print. It's definitely saved me a few times. Know. But yeah, and it'll cool down too. too. So that, and then. So you can come back in the next morning and pull it out and start right from where where uh, it left off. And it is really nice because there's a couple prints where um, I was going, I was probably a 70 hour print and you run out and you're like, you know, you're like, oh, you're good duck, yeah. Well, there's, and there's some that are so big they're using more than a kilogram of filament and- Two or three. And, and I mean, if you don't have a five kilogram spool of material, it's, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to swap out filament at some point, and you can't sit there and babysit it. I mean, for a 72 hour print, it's got to be running overnight. You, I mean, you that's could, a three day but, print. I mean, life goes on. The printer will, yeah, the printer's not gonna stop because yeah. you want to sleep. And there are some other companies out there aside from MakerBot that have um, have extruders that will detect this. I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but I do know they're out sure. there. Yeah, I just know that uh, in the past, maybe with the older smart extruder, that sometimes it would have a false positive or a false negative, maybe in this case. I don't know what you'd call that, but it would detect a jam that wasn't there. Or maybe yeah, there's a false positive. Yeah, false, you, can, you, yeah can, sure. you can toggle that off. Yeah, but th um, that's where we also run into problems, too. But then if you turn it off, yeah, then, then, it, then, then you it's might actually off. have a And then jam. the reason yeah. for that was the little uh, wheel that had the, had the encoder the, wheel. And the encoder wheel. Yeah. Um, it won't always touch the filament because filament has a, has a variation. So there wasn't it wasn't actually seated up against it enough to actually always be spinning. Um, so that's what they changed in the Smart Extruder Plus. And it was a hard plastic. So yes. sometimes even if the, if the filament was touching, if there was anything that was hanging up that encoder wheel, the filament would be in contact, but it would slide past it. There wouldn't be enough of a grip to turn that encoder wheel. The new encoder wheel has a slightly larger diameter so that it is always in contact, and it has a rubber overmold, so it's more grip against the filament. So I don't think we've had a single false false positive with the Smart Extruder Plus. Not that Plus. I can think of. So Smart Extruder Plus really such a huge upgrade over the original. Yeah, if you're, if you're on a fifth gen unit of MakerBot, go out, first request to see if you can get a, to, to get a Smart Extruder Plus. Um, they might, you might still be in your warranty where they'll, they'll be able to swap that out. Did, Otherwise- Did they do the, uh, they had the $100 upgrade at some point? That was- That's a long time I, ago. I think that that's, <laughs> yeah. that's gone. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, but invest in a smart extruder plus it'll save you a lot of headaches and then update your firmware for your machine that'll help as well. So one last thing you might want to do or you why you might want to be switching materials out is if you're going from one material to a completely different material. Let's say you're going from PLA to NinjaFlex. Now this won't always work. Materials don't always like to bond to different materials. Um, but let's say you're doing a coaster set and you want to have the hard coaster part 
and you also want to have a grippy part that will be against the table. So you'd basically be printing, uh, well you'd print the Ninja Flex part first, so that's your grippy part, and then you print the PLA on top of that. But again, not always guaranteed to work. PLA doesn't always like to stick to Ninja Flex. Um, pla uh, not all plastics, just because it's a plastic or it's a printable material doesn't mean it's going to bond to another printable material. Yeah, polypropylene is one that does not like to stick to itself. No. So that's why you don't see a lot of polypropylene fil filament out there. But I think that takes care of changing filament mid-print. Uh, we hope you are liking this new format. We're trying to keep it short, trying to keep it just to one topic per podcast. Uh, if you have any feedback, definitely let us know either in the YouTube comments below here or if you're listening to the audio version, shoot us an email, support at Fargo3dprinting.com um, or really hit up any of our social media channels. Just where... yell at John for <laughs> yeah. any of it. Yeah, we are, we are responsive. We may not always, uh, or we are listening, we may not always get an answer to that question right away, but we are taking note of it. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming up soon. Like we have an interview that we just shot. I won't say what it is yet, but I think it's gonna post. Um, It'll probably be out be before yeah, this. Yeah, before this, because it's uh, very time sensitive. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, we have another interview later this week, so. Yeah. All right, so on behalf of myself, John Schneider, Eric Faldi, and Jay Clark, we wanna thank you for watching slash listening to the Fargo 3D Printing Show, and we hope you will listen to the episodes we have going on in the future. So, all right, bye. <laughs> Hey, Adam Bean Industries mentioned Fargo 3D printing. Yo, on a podcast, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like the old, uh, the old Elmer Fudd, the fat one. They have uh, a skinny one now.